Frigidaire. We introduce the first home freezer. The first pulsator agitator washer. And now we introduce the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher, designed with a unique wash arm that gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. Hi, I'm John Mallows. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this day. It's on the air, off the presses, a lot to talk about. We are talking with somebody from the Fresno Business Journal. That's right, we'll talk about the election and all sorts of topics. 436, MeTV, option 11, back in a moment. Glad to be back with you here on a Monday morning. It's on the air, off the presses, the start of a new week here on Comcast Channel 187 and 43.6 and now 13.1. And of course, the other two stations, uh, U2 and Biz TV, the replays at 2 o'clock and 8 o'clock tonight. So plenty of chances to watch the replay of this one here. It'll also be on YouTube. If you miss it, just go to youtube.com forward slash me TV Fresno. Want to start off talking about baseball. And kind of a sad note to start off with before we get into the videotape. Oscar Tavares, he's that young uh, outfielder for the St. Louis Cardinals. He was involved in a car crash in the Dominican Republic. He unfortunately died within the last couple of days. A big loss for Major League Baseball. You might recall Tavares is the one who hit that game-tying home run against the Giants in game number two of the National League Championship Series. Tavares, good friends with Juan Perez of the Giants. Perez hit that two-run double, that bomb, that shot off the center field wall last night in game number five. Uh, Perez was brought to tears last night in the fifth inning in the clubhouse thinking about his friend Oscar Tavares who once again dying in a car crash in the Dominican Republic. So a big loss for Major League Baseball. To the highlights in the game, and I'll tell you what, yeah, the Giants offense exploded with Perez and all the rest of them, but it was this man, Madison Bumgarner. Go to the videotape, show you what I'm talking about. He was the man of the hour. He was the star of Game 5 of the World Series. There he is, pitching in the ninth inning, 117 pitches, and a complete game shutout for Mad Bum. Second pitcher in franchise history to go with two back-to-back -back shutouts in postseason. The last one, Christy Mathewson, back in 1905 for the Giants. Uh, postseason for Bumgarner, his ERA is 0.29, 12 hits, 31 innings, 27 strikeouts. He ranks right up there with a guy named Gibson, maybe Koufax, Morris, uh, Schilling. And last night at AT&T, they were chanting MVP, MVP. Um, and, you know, it's uh, the first time that the, uh, uh, in the World Series that there was a shutout in 11 years. And the man, 25 years old, from Hickory, North Carolina, Madison Bumgarner, has given his uh, team, the Giants, a chance to win it now tomorrow night in game number six of the World Series as the uh, series now switches back to Kauffman Stadium. Uh, in Kansas City. So Jake Peavy going for the Giants. And I'll tell you what, congratulations to Bumgarner and the Giants for a great game last night and over the weekend. All right, now turning to our main topic here, and it's on the air off the presses. We're going to talk about all sorts of things. By the way, our telephone number, 436 Me TV, option 11. We're going to start off talking about Chick Chansey Park. I'm going to roll the videotape. You know. Uh, uh, not Chick Chansey Park, I meant Chick Chansey Casino, but you can take a look at the park. Who knows if the park will shut down? The Grizzlies are, in fact, now affiliated with the Houston Astros, but that is the casino right there. Let's roll the videotape. I think we have that as well. Shut down by Lawrence O'Neill, a federal judge. He ordered this place uh, shut down after, you know, uh, an armed showdown between a pair of tribal groups. 
and uh, I guess we're having problems there finding the right video. The casino video is shut down, not the stadium. Okay, stadium's not shut down, it's the casino. Oh, okay. Chuck Chansey, as you know, sits about 40 miles north. That's the video I was talking about, north of Fresno. In fact, last week, the federal agency that oversees the Indian Gaming Casino threatened to shut it down because of uh, the missing audits and some uh, were due last year. So in fact, after the showdown, they went in and they shut it down. And so tensions between the two continue to rise. Uh, there'll be another hearing. 100 plus employees have now been laid off. And so they're going to collect unemployment. No one knows when this thing is going to be back up and running. As you know, Proposition 48 will allow Madera County to build another Indian gaming casino. We'll see if that passes. We'll talk to our guest about that. But live in our studio right now is Gabriel Dillard. He is from the Business Journal here in the city of Fresno to talk about what is happening at the casino and also talk about some of the races that are going on uh, here in Fresno County. We'll talk about the judges race and the Viaduct race, and of course, in Valadeo and Renteria and anything else that you'd like to talk about with our guy, Gabriel Dillard from the Business Journal. We're back with our program. Remember, 436, Me TV, Option 11. Tune in to Heartland for the best in true country music. Relive vintage specials, one-of-a-kind concerts, and country music's earliest videos. Heartland is the heart of country. The only place where you can find country music, country stars, and country lifestyles 24-7. Heartland, the heart of country. Now on channel 13.2. We're back here on the show. Connect with me. We're talking with Gabriel Dillard from the Business Journal. Good to see you, my friend. Good, Good to see you, too. Glad you're here. How was the weekend? Oh, it was great. Uh, Good. A lot of baseball. Yeah. All right. Yeah, a lot of baseball yeah. with the Giants, of course, and Madison Bumgarner, and that sad news coming out of the Dominican yeah. with the Tavares, that young, brilliant player for the St. Louis Cardinals, now just gone. Yeah. Gone. Sad. Very sad. And a sad day for Major League Baseball. Anyway, I want to talk about Chick. We can talk about Chick Chansey Park. <laughs> but I mainly want to talk about the casino and what's going on there and what's your take on what's happened so far. You know, they threatened to shut it down with these audits. Then, you know, the armed showdown between the two tribes, they came in and uh, then they did shut it down. Now they lay all these employees off. What's your take on what's going on over there? Well, I mean, it's, overall, it's just sad, you know, for, for Madera County, 13, 1,400 jobs, you know, that are in limbo. Um, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that they were able to go as long as they did with their tribal problems and uh, not have it affect the casino until now. I mean, they've been having these issues for years now, um, but it just, you know, they just kind of stepped over the line and, and kind of put, put their patrons in danger. So I think that's what shut it down. And, you know, now let's see if they could, you know, get it back open. I, I think time will tell. The bowling point, as far as you're concerned, was what? In the in the um, well, I mean, I I, just, I think there's just a long history. You know, you have three or four different factions that are they're claiming, um, you know, ownership or, or at least leadership of the tribe. Maybe control. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, that's it. You know, <clears throat> we heard that there those people were in there trying to get documents, and you know, they have these audits that they they need to produce. Um, yeah, I you know, my take is. Just, it, it, it looks like greed, you know, and I think I'm not the first person to say that. Um, and I just think, you know, people have said they're killing the golden goose by, uh, you know, letting this spill out into the casino. And, and this is security video, of course, from that uh, yeah. that raid. And, um, you know, uh, these tribes coming in, uh, many members here coming in, uh, just drawing their guns. Um, and uh, there's the sheriff's department putting some people in handcuffs there. But... Uh, kind of a shock to see this thing actually come to a head and it has to do I guess with control and money and in your perspective from the business journal how is this going to affect the economy since you know they employ well over a hundred people there now all these employees have been laid off how is this going to impact our economy here? The un unemployment rate is already high. Right, and it's, you know, the unemployment is kind of just the start. You know, there's thousands of vendors, I would imagine, that do business with the casino, you know, small businesses selling them um, food or drink or, you know, whatever. It's, 
it'll definitely have a ripple effect, um, you know, and Madera County as it is, you know, it doesn't have, you know, the hugest businesses, you know, that, that are just large employers. And, and that's one of the, probably the biggest one in the county, maybe next to some of the public uh, agencies, but it's, it's not good. You know, and I think as time goes on, we'll kind of see it play out a little more. Now, um, you know, we had somebody here from Madera County uh, just recently here and uh, last week talking about this Proposition 48 that's going to allow perhaps another casino to go in. I'm sure Chick Chansey is fighting it. They don't want it. Table Mountain probably doesn't want it. Mm -hmm. um, but I've seen some of the ads and done a little research on Prop 48. Um, is this good for Madera County to have another casino in your opinion? I mean, jobs is probably a top priority in that in that county. And where else are these people going to go to work? Mm -hmm. There is no other work in Madera, I guess. I don't know what. How do you view that? Is it good for Madera County to have another casino? Well, you know, if, if just on paper, I guess it's good. You know, it's a jobs created, but casinos have their own issues. You know, and I think when uh, the the tribe, the North Fork tribe, were negotiating to build that casino, that they took that into account. So for Madera County would get probably millions and billions of dollars in, you know, support for to, to help take care of, uh, you know, inc increase police presence, that sort of thing to keep the casino uh, safe. But I don't know. It's that that's a tough question. I mean, I think that's ultimately what people are going to be uh, deciding, you know, when they go to vote for Prop 48. Um, the difference with this casino is it, it's it was off of their traditional, um, you know, tribal lands. And I think that's kind of the, the new proposed one right. is not on tribal no. land. Well, and opponents are, as you've seen through the ads and what I've seen on the internet, they're they're a little outraged about the fact that the promise was to keep this on tribal land, right? And it's not. Yeah, is that an issue? I, oh, I think that's the the sole issue, at least with Prop Forty Eight. You know, and, and I think the issue with the other casinos is just to keep this from opening. But I think a lot of people, you know, use the the term reservation shopping. Um, but you know, and, and I mentioned that it's not part of their tribal land, and that's just whenever yeah. they they receive that land up in, up in uh, near Yosemite. But as far as the federal government con is concerned, that that is their land. That's sovereign tribal land currently. So. Um, you know, as far as Prop 48 goes, it, 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 it's there's a question on whether or not if if uh, if it does pass or it doesn't pass, it, it could still the casino is more than likely going to be built. Even um, if Prop 48 doesn't pass, the, you know that's what people are saying. You know, it's the the tribe could have the option of going to court, um, and then uh, you know the, what the decision or what the question is is whether or not the, the state's uh, gaming compact with the uh, the tribe should be. Um, ratified. So wow. if, if that, that compact goes out the window with this election, um, you know, what's to stop the state from uh, forming another gaming compact? It, it could just be kind of a delayer. Yeah, let's take a phone call here. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Go ahead. Yes, uh, my, my question is this, um, I, and I don't know. Is, it, it's against the law for anyone besides uh, uh, Indian uh, tribe to have casinos in California. If that's the case, why are they allowed to build it outside their, their uh, reservation? Um, and, and in doing so, wouldn't that open it up for anybody to build a, a casino? I mean, as long as they're on their uh, reservation, I can understand they can yeah. do what they want to do, I guess. But when they come on on uh, outside the reservation and build a casino, does that change the laws altogether? Uh, that's that's good, my question. I'll take it over the air. Thank you. That's a good question because I thought it was against the law, too. It was against our Constitution mm -hmm. that they uh, they are not to build on, off, the, off their, the tribal land. Uh, I thought that was against the law, too. Mm -hmm. uh, but here we're talking about, well, is it tribal land? Is it not tribal land? I'm not sure I know the answer to that question. Well, the, the definitive answer is it's definitely tribal land because the federal government has put it in trust on behalf of the tribe. So it's it's sovereign tribal land. Um, the pre I don't know. But I think I think what people are saying is it could open the door. Yeah. 
yeah. for other tribes to look for other pieces of land that are not tribal land mm -hmm. to build a casino. And that is against the law, is it not? Well, that's true, you know, um, but the, the North Fork uh, tribe has been working for like the last decade to get this casino built. Yeah. I'm not sure of any other plans for casino or tri tribes to open a um, uh, casinos off of their traditional. But this is the claim land. coming from the other side, the opponents of this, and, and maybe mm -hmm. who knows, that could be coming from Chichancy, that could be coming from Table Mountain, but yeah. um, um, so even if Prop 48 doesn't pass, that thing may go anyway, but the perception after this incident at Chichancy Casino, mm -hmm. the public perception, do you think Prop 48 will pass now? Oh, that's, <laughs> if I knew the answer to that, I'd be a millionaire. Um, you know, I really don't know. I, I haven't looked at any of the polling. Um, yeah, that's a good question. I, I'm not sure if it'll pass Because what's not. the yeah. public perception now? Yeah, and you know, that public perception is, is a big thing because, you know, if, if say, if this thing, uh, the, the casino gets scrapped, or at least the compact, it would be up to the legislature uh, to, to negotiate another one, and, you know, Jerry Brown would have to sign off on that. So, you know, if uh, voters reject this casino, to see how, how clear of a message that is to our legislators to, to, to you know, when it's time to, to get this compact going again, maybe they'll hold back and you know you know the other thing you gotta you gotta realize too that if it doesn't pass which you know I kind of have an inkling it may not after this chick chancy thing that's just a wild guess I don't know I have a crystal ball either yeah. but um, if it it doesn't pass and they try to build it anyway the tribe mm -hmm. okay I have a feeling they're gonna be challenged perhaps in court too yeah 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 well you know that's a good question because I'm not sure how you can challenge um, a, a project. Uh, well, if there's a casino and if they build the casino without the gaming compact with the state, I mean, that's, I don't know how likely that is, but. Yeah, I don't know they either. Could, they could build anything there. They, I mean, they could build 10,000 houses. I mean, it, I don't know if that, that's not quite the money machine, but. Yeah, it's but they land. want the casino there because it, it is a money machine. Yeah. The yeah. problem is who's gonna control that money once it's generated. <laughs> The you know. tribe, yeah, as we see. Yeah, I, I know for now, for a fact, it's not going to be you or me. Oh, yeah. We won't be controlling any of that money. 436, Me TV, Option 11, talking about Chick Chansey Casino. We might even get into the fact of talking about Chick Chansey Park. Uh, we got a phone call coming in? Yeah, let's take the phone call before we actually go to a break. Good morning. You're on Connect With Me. Go ahead. Yes, uh, pertaining to uh, Proposition 48. I'd like to know if all the casinos that are built along Interstate 5, Interstate 5 to Oregon and them are all in Indian land because they're right off the freeway. Also, if you go down to Arizona and Interstate 10, there's all casinos along the way of the freeway and are all uh, Indian land. Also, on Palm Springs, there's a casino right in the center of town. Is that Indian land? Please. I'd like to know. Okay. So the question was if that's Indian land? Yeah. Um, it, it is. I mean, it, and what the North Fork claim was that it was part of their traditional uh, range. And that's how they, they got this land to, to become uh, put in trust by the federal government. So, uh, the, you know, the fact that it's right by 99 is a happy, uh, I wouldn't say a happy coincidence, but it's a pretty shrewd moved by the tribe to, to get that thing located where obviously the other casinos are I would scared. imagine they have proper documentation uh, that shows that that's tribal land. Yeah, yeah, you know, like I, I said, as far as the, the um, Bureau of Indian Affairs and the federal government, that, that's their land. That's their land, yeah, okay. Yeah, there's no question. Talking with Gabriel Dillard of the Fresno Business Journal, and we're gonna talk a lot more about this and might even get into Chickchancy Park just a little bit. Back with your phone calls at 436-ME-TV, option 11, in just a moment. Considering solar? Whether you're ready to buy now or just exploring your options, the consultants at Solar Negotiators are here to help you. A call to Solar Negotiators is like calling five solar companies at once. You see, when local established solar contractors have gaps in their schedule, they call Solar Negotiators to fill them. Right now, get five years of panel cleaning and maintenance or $1,000 off your new solar panels. So stop wasting your time searching and call Solar Negotiators because when contractors compete for your business, you win. 
Back here on Connect with me with Gabriel Dillard, the Business Journal right here in the city of Fresno is a very old publication. It's been around many, many moons, over 100 years. So what is it, about 129 years or something like that? I think like that's that? it, yeah, 129 yeah. years. So wow. five generations currently working at the at the Business Journal right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah I want to, uh, just, just to touch up a little bit on this uh, Chukchansi uh, Gold Resort and Casino, um, is it your inkling? Uh, what, what's the uh, opinion about some of your coworkers over there at the Business Journal? Do they think this place is going to reopen at some point? You know, that that's a good question. Um, personally, I, I think that they will reopen. Um, I think that the stakes are too high for that, that casino to be closed um, just because of, of these factions. Um, I but think don't, that don't, don't a lot of things have to be determined? Don't, don't. Uh, doesn't it have to be determined who's going to control what? Yeah, but I don't think that is actually even been clear for the last couple of years. Who's actually in control of the casino? I mean, but it, but I don't think the courts will let them open up until they determine and and you know uh, straighten that issue out. Uh, which tribe is in control? Right. This I, is like the Hatfields and the McCoys. <laughs> it really is. That's a good question. I mean, I, it seems like, you know, the big thing are these audits, at least according to the National Indian Gaming Commission. Um, you know, they, they want to make sure that uh, the money is, is, is not falling down a hole somewhere. And, who you know, who knows? <laughs> who knows? I mean, I think uh, we'll have to produce those audits to find out. But, you know, I, as far as the other strife, I, I, I just they've been able to operate for a while now without any sort of clear picture of who's in charge um so i, I don't know I, if i think it would be a good thing if they straighten that out before they reopen but i don't know if they would ever really straighten that out well but you can't have uh you can't reopen the place and then have a tribe go in with guns drawn and mm -hmm. put the patrons at risk. Would you agree with that? Yeah, you know, once that happens once, it, you know, if the situation doesn't change, what's to stop it from happening again and escalating? I mean, you, we saw that video. That's, you know, kind of thuggish stuff that they're doing, you know, going in with the guns drawn. Yeah, it's the Lewis group and the McDonald group that are going at it. Reggie Lewis and his, his gang going at it against the McDonald group, and mm -hmm. they... Uh, are like the Hatfields and the McCoys. It's been going on for years and years and years, but they have to be able to, you know, besides the audits, I, I see two issues on the table. The audits, yeah, that's a big thing because they want to know where the money's going and where, you know, if it's there, but they also have to ensure safety for everyone involved in the casino, and that includes the employees too, not just right. the patrons that go in there. Right. I think is I don't know how you determine uh, that. Though. You know, I think as long as you have warring factions, uh, like you said, you know, what's to stop this from happening again? Um, you know, you think that they would? I, I don't know if this this faction came in and did what they did with, if they would have known that it would shut the casino down. I I, I, won't, I question if they would have done it. Um, maybe they would, maybe they wouldn't have, but they had to have known that that this was one step too far. But you'd think that they would be able to come to the table and hash these their differences out mm -hmm. because now the entire place is shut down it's a no win for everybody mm -hmm. instead of generating a million dollars a day they're generating zero yeah. and the place is shut down so you'd think okay my god we're losing a million dollars a day we better come to the table and come to a meeting of the minds yeah Would, every, wouldn't you wouldn't you think <laughs> i mean every motivation in the world is there for them to to hash this out but you know, I, I think What's, that there's... I wonder what's stopping them. I think that, that there's some real bad blood, you know. It's, Greed? Yeah. It, well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing, too. You know, you, you agree to maybe take part of the pie or bigger part of the pie if you don't, you know, try to work it out, so... Yeah, what's wrong with you take <laughs> half and I'll take half? That's not good enough? Mm. Wow. Uh, I don't know. You think, But you think it, it goes deeper than that, that it, it really is a bad blood situation? Well, it just seems like there's years of this happening, you know, and the, the tribal disenrollments is one thing. So there's families, you know, kind of pitted against families, you know, and I it like just like the Hatfields and McCoys. So. Yeah. So it's all this vengeance and this, this anger that's built up over the course of time. That's what's done it. Yeah. And I, I think that that's one thing that would lead them to do this armed raid of the casino right. i mean i, d I do want to because i did mention in the mon monologue we did talk about chick chancy just for a minute uh the ballpark that is and of course last week they had this big news conference uh introducing the houston astros 
Um, let me ask you something, Gabriel. In, 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 in all honesty, does anybody care about this? The I hope Houston so. <laughs> Astros? Are you kidding me? Yeah, you know, Come I, on. it's as far as our market goes, there's not a whole lot of interest, and most of the people I talk to just aren't interested. Um, now but, that the Giants are out of the picture, yeah, they yeah. just don't care. They're not going to go to the game. Yeah, and you know, I personally, I, I hope that that's not the case because I, you know, I think we still, if you look at it this way, we still have a team here. They're still called the Grizzlies, and they're still our team. You know, the the faces might be different, but you know, we'll we'll see. I, I I kind of I have a feeling that they'll they'll lose. There might be some interest that gets lost you know, in the shuffle. But they're gonna lose some patrons out there, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you think at your chancy park? Yeah, I you know I think so. I mean, there's a chance that people just aren't gonna go because there's no connection to the Giants. Um, you know, I, I think it's more telling what maybe some of their corporate sponsors will do, you know, some of the, the larger uh, You think companies. they'll lose some sponsors? You know, I, I don't know. I, I, I hope not. I hope it doesn't go that far because, you know, if you're a company that's sponsoring the Grizzlies, you're you're sponsoring the Grizzlies. You're not sponsoring the Giants, yeah. you know. So it, you, let's hope that that support stays. But Somebody needs to tell me, and maybe a caller can call in and tell us, or maybe you can, 436-ME-TV, option 11, by the way. Um, someone needs to tell me, why are the Grizzlies good for Fresno? If they can't pay their rent on time, the city is having to pick up the slack. I know that they're, they're paid up through, in fact, uh, there was a, a recent article in the B that they paid up, you know, they just went down to City Hall and presented that check. Okay, so they're paid up through next year. But if they're struggling and have been since day one, Mm -hmm. This is a financial nightmare for the city of Fresno. They don't draw anything but flies out there for games. Mm -hmm. They're not generating revenue. Someone call in, or you, tell me why the Grizzlies are good for the city of Fresno. For what, why? Well, I think that if you had, if you didn't have the Grizzlies and you don't have somebody paying rent on that, that stadium for six months, or, you know, whatever the whole you know you don't they're have not a pain able to tenant. pay it anyway well you know they're paying it uh, you know mm, the, the they're, check, they're check, struggling paying some to of pay it. it but i i assure you that the city of fresno would rather have that than nothing at all why uh because then then the the whole that whole debt burden is on all of our backs the taxpayers which it is i mean it technically is and so the grizzlies are in there you know paying their rent they're it's the highest rent uh, what i've heard in, in the minor leagues and you know, I think without the Grizzlies, as far as the city coffers, it, it, you know, I don't, I don't think it's a good thing if they, if they were to, to, to go. I, I think the best thing is if they could find a buyer who's willing to, you know, put some capital into it and maybe they could renegotiate a lease. Yeah, and whether or not they can find a buyer remains to be seen. Chris Cummings has been here a number of times on the show talking about the fact that he is looking for investors or someone to come in and outright buy the team. And he even admitted to me that as far as he's concerned, you know, he, he came in here, and I think he was kind of blindsided by the whole thing because he thought he was just going to put his feet up and, you know, drink a cold beer and watch the game and everything's going to be cozy, right? Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden he walks into this quagmire, so to speak. Yeah, and he's been, you know, I, I, he's been around for a while. I mean, I don't think they've ever had a profitable season. I don't know what no. their motivation is when buying the team, but... He yeah. wanted to be an owner. Yeah, yeah, now he's an owner. <laughs> <laughs> now he's an owner, but yeah. look at the problems that come with it. So, yeah. 436 Me TV, option 11. Do call in if you want to offer a question on this. We're going to talk about the politics uh, that are coming up on November the, the 4th. That's Election Day. We'll talk about some of these races and much more that might be on your mind. 436 Me TV, option 11. Back in a moment. When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the Samsung big screen we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool, and it's a good place to start. But you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Time for that upgrade to an HD 3D web-enabled Samsung TV. Get the best selection, price, and service in town without waiting. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. We're having a debate here about uh, soccer at Chickchancy Park on Connect With Me. And so, um, you know, it's one thing to have an exhibition game here, MLS game or whatever, okay, and it gets sold out. 
but if you had 50 plus games here, would they all be sold out? Would they go all the time, in your opinion? That's that's a good question. I mean, you know, I, I think that comes down to, you know, disposable income and just, uh, I don't know. That, that I've never even heard that people talk about bringing soccer in, but um, that's actually a pretty intriguing idea. Yeah, to retrofit the stadium costs a lot of money, millions mm -hmm. upon millions of dollars. Um, and so uh, where's the city going to get the money to do that? Mm -hmm. uh, would MLS chip in for the renovation of the stadium? I don't know, but it, it certainly does not meet the soccer standards right now. Yeah, I, I don't know anything yeah. about that. Anyway, I want to talk about Election Day coming up on November the 4th. That is uh, not tomorrow, but next Tuesday is Election Day. And so if you haven't registered to vote, uh, the deadline has already passed. That was October 20th. So get your vote in. And speaking of not voting, I want to talk about this judges race between Hill and Gamoyan. A lot of barbs being traded back and forth. There's Rachel Hill, of course. Uh, Gamoyan uh, was on our show last uh, Tuesday, I believe. There she is right there. So, okay, Gamoyan says, I haven't voted in 10 years. Hill, I think seven or eight years uh, uh, have gone by when she hasn't voted. So these nasty barbs being traded back and forth. We see the billboards. We see the ads on television. Um, how do you see what's going down in this race? Yeah, it's... Uh you know, I think they're also saying that this is one of the, the highest dollar uh, judicial races, you know, as far as money spent. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think people don't like seeing that. But, you know, I, um, you know we saw that with uh, the Smith Camp and uh, Elizabeth Egan. That was a pretty, you know, pretty contentious race as well. But, you know. This thing, you think in your uh, mind or your opinion, this thing has turned ugly? Oh, yeah, I think so. I actually um, got a press release earlier today uh, about from the Fresno Chamber. Um, it sounds like they're going to be having a, a presser later on today with uh, Judge Hill, Rachel Hill. Um, to, to, I think it sounds like they're going to bash Lisa Gamoyan for some of the ads that she's had. Um, I, I think there's a couple of big... Uh, four-page ads in the B this past weekend yeah, um, by both candidates yeah yeah both it, candidates had those ads in there exactly you saw that uh -huh. but uh, yeah uh, so it sounds like the Chamber of Commerce today later on um, will in fact endorse Hill you know I'm not sure if it's quite an endorsement I, I they may have I don't I, I the chambers put all their endorsements out and I haven't reviewed it and um but it, it, at the least it sounds like uh, they're gonna gather at least to bring up the fact the uh, call for what they said is misleading and personal negative campaign uh, being waged in the race and and, and Rachel Hill's going to be at this press conference apparently so you can kind of see what which direction the ire is going but ha haven't they both been engaging in the same pretty much the same process they they're attacking each other it's, yeah, whether it's, it's misleading or not i mean they both like i mean it's kind of hypocritical for Rachel Hill to say Hey, she's, you know, putting these misleading ads on the air about me. Isn't isn't Hill doing the same thing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think they're, you know, the truth is always kind of hard to suss out in, in a campaign like this. But I, I, what I did read was that um, uh, Judge Oliver Wanger, or he's not a judge anymore, but uh, he was uh, residing in federal court with some of these water decisions, and he took offense to yeah. one of Lisa's ads. That's not Wanger right there. That's actually Judge Robert Oliver, the man that uh, they're, they're trying replacing. to replace. He's been on the bench for there for 20 years, and so it's either going to be Hill or Gamoyan to replace that man, Judge Robert Oliver, and... Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what the voters, I wonder if the voters at this point are disgusted with, with both candidates, both parties, mm -hmm. uh, for the amount of attack ads they've engaged themselves in. Yeah, you, you, you would think, you know, but you know, come election day, somebody's going to vote. And I think that they're going for those people who are going to put the numbers up, you know, and I, and I think that I think they just have to hope that you have to see that it's a campaign and, and campaigns get negative. I, I don't know if that turns people off to not vote. Or, you know. I have always heard, because I've been in broadcasting for so long, and every station that I've ever worked for has always said, oh, this is going to be a good financial year. It's going to be great financially for us here at the station because it's an election year. Why are election years so good financially for everybody involved? Well, I mean, you, you you just see all the money that's being spent um, on mail, on on TV ads, 
um, you know, I mean, it's sign makers, it's, it's real money. I mean, millions and millions of dollars and that's getting infused in a short amount of time. And it's, it is good. You know, it's good for, for the media. It's good for, um, you know, the B full page ads don't, aren't cheap. Um, but you know, I think I personally feel burnt out on it. I, I probably got pounds and pounds of, of uh, campaign mail at my house and, you know, I, I know that that's uh, some of these races are tight, but I'm, I get sick of it. You know, I, that's just me. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I hope it doesn't keep people from voting, but you know, maybe it might kind of just color what they're going to do. As far it, as it might, it might have an influence on mm -hmm. what their final decision will be yeah. in terms of, uh, you know, election day. Yeah. But, you know, I think, you know, you just, you want that voter to have your name, uh, fresh in their mind so i think you're going to be seeing these mailers up until tuesday next tuesday you know it's um and then the silly season will be over <laughs> yeah yeah hey i want to go to another race and that's the one between uh Vidak and chavez um more i mean there's andy Vidak right now of course he's the one in office and chavez the former school board member fresno unified um, trying to challenge uh, Vidak. and you talk about you know i saw the debate on kc24 I don't know if you saw that debate the other day, mm -hmm. last week. I did it. Lively debate. Um, but here are two more candidates. I mean, it doesn't get more vicious than this. It really doesn't. I mean, if you look at those ads on television, mm. the, some of the creative writing within the ads, I mean, they just really poke holes in each other. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. one's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see, um, that's the dirty politician. I think is yeah. what Vida Chavez, Chavez is. That, yeah, Chavez, the dirty uh, politician. <laughs> Even the Fresno Bee questioned his tactics, and then you got the Videk ad. You know, Andy Videk, just another Sacramento politician. Yeah. You know, aren't you? I, I mean, what do you think when you see some of these ads, especially the, those two? Well, you know, <laughs> you just you see that. People, you know, they're bending the truth. I mean, you know, the, 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 that one ad by Vidak on Chavez <laughs> saying that the B was slamming Chavez, but they endorsed him. Yeah. I mean, they, they did endorse them, but they still said is It's very misleading. It, it is. It is. And, you know, because if you read the B, they endorsed Chavez. Obviously, mm -hmm. it goes without saying. Yeah. Um, and then you see that ad, and if you hadn't read the endorsement, you're thinking, wow, did the B endorse Viadac? Uh, yeah. You know. And you got to look at the quote marks and the ellipses <laughs> and, the, and what they're saying, the B. You have to, you know, it's... it's if you're not in, you know, if you're kind of just a casual observer, it's it's tough, you know. It's, God, it's so tough to be a voter these days and be informed, you know. Yeah, well, if you want to be informed, don't look at those ads. No, no, you can't. Yeah, I mean, you, you just, you have to do your own research. And Should the rules tighten up on that in, in terms of what you can say about your opponent in an ad? I mean, we can go on and say anything. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you can't lie. Um, and if you if you lie, you're gonna get dinged. But you can bend the truth to make it look like a lie. Oh yeah, that's a proud American tradition in politics, you know. Yeah. Do you uh, think that the restrictions on these some of these ads should be tightened up? Well, you know, I think you run into some free speech issues, you know, and I I don't know. I personally, I I think you just have to be a sophisticated voter and you, you just have to kind of, you can't look at that stuff and, and take it for, um, you know, gospel. You have to, you have to be informed. What you're saying is, is that you cannot base your vote by looking at those ads. And where do you do your research if you're a voter? Online, I guess? Huh? Yeah, you research know. Research the I, issue I yourself, right? You got to look at, you know, the materials from the state, you know, and I think if you're going to look at some of that campaign stuff, Look at both sides, you know, and kind of judge for yourself. Um, you want to look at some not uh, you know, nonpartisan, or um, you know, I guess you look at people who don't really have a dog in the race. You know, I know the League of Women Voters; they put out a lot of information. I, some people might question their where they stand, but you know, there's sources out there for people to. to where I mean, at the Business Journal, where do you guys get do all your research for the campaign? Um, you know, like I said, we, we I follow both of the campaigns and, and uh, you know, I try to find the truth, uh, look at a lot of just the state, you know, so the, the, the ballot statements, that sort of thing. And, you know, and you look at other newspapers, you know, what they're doing, um, you know, if you see something in a story, in a newspaper story, um, that's about a candidate, you, you probably take that for, you know, that's what happened. Uh, and then, you know, a lot of people look to the ed editorials as well, and, you know, that has its own. Um, 
coming from a different place than a story. But, you know, you, you just got to find impartial source, sources of information. Uh, right. And even if, say, the Fresno Bee endorses somebody, you have to look at what the editorial board, what their slant is or what their take mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Is it leaning left? Is it leaning right? And why are they endorsing a particular candidate? So right. uh, sh how much stock should you put into a paper endorsing a candidate should you put any stock at all you know, into it? I don't know. In, in these days, you know, newspapers aren't quite, um, you know, don't quite have the stature they used to as far as just commanding an audience. Um, I want to say that you know, if you look at a newspaper editorial, you're at least going to get a well thought out argument. You know, that's going to be backed up. Right. I might be, you know, biased just because I come from that that background in print uh, journalism, and we've done our own editorials, but <coughs> sure. Um, you know, you just got to look at the reasons why they're doing it and just decide for yourself. Right. Gabriel Dillard is our guest here on Connect With Me, 436, Me TV, Option 11. We're back in a moment. Considering solar? Whether you're ready to buy now or just exploring your options, the consultants at Solar Negotiators are here to help you. A call to Solar Negotiators is like calling five solar companies at once. You see, when local established solar contractors have gaps in their schedule, they call Solar Negotiators to fill them. Right now, get five years of panel cleaning and maintenance or $1,000 off your new solar panels. So stop wasting your time searching and call Solar Negotiators because when contractors compete for your business, you win. Back here on the program, let's uh, talk about the other race, uh, the big one, and uh, the attack ads, uh, Valadeo and Renteria. Valadeo, of course, the incumbent there in Congress. He's a Republican. He was a guest here for an entire hour on our broadcast a couple of weeks back. Uh, a few days later, Renteria came on and stated her case for another hour. She's the challenger, and they're portraying her, the Valadeo camp, as a Washington insider, having you know, worked in Washington for many years, um, working for many politicians back there, and the fact that she specifically flew back out here move back out to the West Coast, California, so she could run for Congress. Mm -hmm. That's the claim. I don't mm -hmm. know whether that's true or not, but what do you make of this race? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it seems like it, it's looking like a tight one if you look at the money that's been spent and the firepower. You know, uh, uh, Renteria brought Joe Biden to, to Bakersfield just the <laughs> other week, and um, the other day I saw uh, Jeb Bush doing a, a c commercial for uh, Valadeo in Spanish. Yeah. Flawless Spanish. Imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, there, there's, yeah, you know, th this race is going up kind of the higher higher levels as far as you know people that are weighing in one way or the other. Well, I saw this Channel 30 poll. I think Videk at one time was up by like 14 or 17 points, whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, or whatever it was, and now it's tightened up. It's like 46 to 42. Yeah. In favor of Valadeo. So that that's really tightened up. Yeah, and you know, um, you had a Renteria's campaign looking at some of those early uh, mail-in votes, and, and there's, they could see that there's more Democrats that are returning those ballots early. Um, they don't know how they're voting, but um, they took that as a sign that, that there's some, um, you know, uh, some uh, momentum there. Uh, I don't know, you know, Renteria, uh, she's, she has an impressive resume. She definitely did work back east. She worked in Washington. Um, you know, whether you want to just kind of write that off or, or see it as a strength, I mean, it just depends on your viewpoint. And it's tough to unseat an un incumbent, you know, and mm -hmm. um, this has been an impressive race, I think. I mean, th these two did a, a debate in Spanish. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, uh, and Valadeo speaks fluent Spanish. Yeah, yeah, and he's... he's That's kind of surprising. I think he's like a second-generation Portuguese. Yeah. So that, you know, he, I don't know if he picked that up growing up. Well, or we whatever. had one caller call in here when he was on the show, and he says, you know, you need to... You need to bone up on your Spanish, and he says, "Well, I speak I speak fluent Spanish." Yeah. So, uh, it's almost a prerequisite, you know, if you run for office in that district now, that that you should speak Spanish because there's, I mean, I forgot what the percentage was. Uh, I had a, I think it's like seventy percent, mm -hmm. might be higher. I don't know, uh, Hispanic. So, um, it's it's you know, it's, he's really got that in his corner, but, um, you know. You think Valadeo's surprised at how this thing is tightened up? Because, you know, the Democrats, they pulled a million dollars out of Renteria's campaign because she was so far behind in the polls initially. Mm -hmm. 
So you think Valadeo is kind of kind of shocked by the the closing of the you, of the, you know, the gap there? I I'm not sure. You know, I, I'm not, I don't know. Um, I, I I find I, that kind of surprising. I have to imagine any politician, even if the polling you know is solid in your favor, you're still nervous. There's got to be some doubt, you know, back nervous there. About but, it, yeah, yeah, I imagine, but. You know, we'll, we'll see. You know, it's as far as that district, the 21st district. It's 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 uh, there's more Democratic uh, registration. You know, that that's just hard numbers, and we'll see. Out of the three races that we've mentioned here, which one do you think is the nastiest <laughs> um, from what you've seen from the campaign ads? And we all know we should not vote just by looking at those campaign ads. They're just their propaganda is basically yeah. what they are. But which one is nastier? You know, out of all these, I, I kind of feel like maybe this hill Gamoyan one only because it, it seems like it's drawing other people into this um you into know by, by some of the mudslinging you know you, yeah. you kind of make a statement and you don't want to you want to hit your opponent but you don't want to you don't want other people to kind of catch yeah. some of that and then then they start having press conferences well, to, i don't know Gamoyan was very gracious so she came on this program twice uh hill i was a little baffled by her attitude in that we had a an interview scheduled with her a mm -hmm. live one hour interview and she showed up here at our station the day before the night before at like 6 30 when we were closed down and she said can i she called me and said can i conduct the interview now put it on tape because i can't make it in the morning and i said well our studios are shut down mm -hmm. and i never heard back from her again after that wow so that's kind of odd that she would you know, uh, bail out the night before and want to tape our interview and show up here when she knows that we're closed. Yeah. That's you know, odd behavior, wouldn't you say, well, at the very least? Yeah, that that doesn't look good. Um, I mean, you know, if you make a, if you make a, um, an appointment, you should keep an appointment, but... Yeah, you know. if you can, if you possibly can <laughs> yeah. make an appointment, uh, keep yeah. it uh, a commitment uh, to appear on a program during an election. Yeah, definitely. And you know, it's, I think that's just the case where you see somebody, obviously, in their mind, they have something more important to do than keep your uh, keep your appointment. So I, Or maybe she got cold feet. Yeah, Who maybe, knows? maybe, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, a lot more to talk about here on the show. Hey, I want to talk about Mayor Swearingen. What do you make of this race now? Oh, I don't, you know, I don't know. I, I think some of the polling is saying that Betty is going to be kind of pulling ahead. They, I know they had a debate. I caught a little bit of it on just like a news report. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think it's going to be tough for her, you know, with, with uh, being a Republican. Um, you know, and she's running on uh, what she's done in the city of Fresno. But yet yeah, some people were took offense that she didn't include Fresno in her, uh, you know, her title or occupation on the ballot. On the ballot, yeah. yeah. Mayor slash CEO. Um, you know, I think that's going to be a good race, um, and, and I think uh, we'll see. I mean, I, I wonder how much support she's going to have outside of the, the valley or even in the valley. You know, if she loses, I wonder how she's going to come back here and save face because she changed her mind on gay marriage, Proposition 8. She changed her mind on high-speed rail. She appears now to be in bed, not literally, with Long Jong, who was her political foe at City Hall. Let's take this call here. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Go ahead. Talking about the Gamoyan versus Hill race, I think that the choice is obvious for jurists. Of course, they're going to want to vote for Hill. She's vetted in the legal community, no question about it. And then uh, Gamoyan, of course, has a reputation as being a hard-hitting uh, prosecutor, of course, in uh, in this area, that's something that the voters like to see. So I guess if you're a voter, you should vote for Gawain. If you're a jurist, go ahead, vote for Hill all you want. Hey, my other my other comment and a question uh, for your guest is regarding the um, the Vidak uh, Vidak race. Is he saying or suggesting maybe that that uh, Vidak is unstoppable? That the that the challenger really doesn't have a chance at this? Maybe this go around? Uh, maybe wait for the term out of uh, Vidak before we try to topple? Um, I I I really don't know. I mean, uh, you know, Vidak's the incumbent, and it's just you know it's tougher to unseat an incumbent. Um, you know, Chavez has got a lot of support. You're seeing him in ads with Jerry Brown. You know, who I don't know what that means, but um, I was kind of surprised. Yeah, to yeah. See and, that. And it, weren't you shocked by that? Yeah, and you know, Jerry Brown's ads have been weird. I mean, they've all been about props one and two. I mean, he's not even. It's like he's not even really running. You know, it's he's trying to get these these propositions passed, but. 
you know, short of looking at the polling, I, you know, I don't know. I, I th you know, Andy Vidak um, has a lot of support in Valley, you know, and he's, you know, I've had a chance to hear, hear him speak, and, you know, he, he knows what he's doing. I mean, you know, his experience matters, you know, and he hasn't been there that long, but, you know, that means something. Yeah, that was kind of surprising. You wonder why the uh, the governor is taking time to make an ad just specifically for, for I know for Chavez. But mm -hmm. um, uh, getting back to the mayor thing, I want to ask you about the mayor. Has she lost credibility? You know, I changing her mind about all these issues: Prop Eight, high speed rail, now Blong Jong. Credibility issue with her. Well, you know, I, I think she's always been consistent on, on high-speed rail, always kind of um, supporting that. And, um, but she backed off of that now. She's trying to, she's trying to garner oh, that, well. uh, yeah. you know, that Democratic vote for state office. Yeah, you know, she, she, um, she might not be out there kind of touting high-speed rail right now, but, I mean, she, she's, you know, I, as far as my understanding, she's been supportive. As far as Prop 8, you know, I don't know. It, that's, that's such a hot button issue. But if people. she's out on the campaign trail right now, if some reporter were to stop her and ask her, what's your stance on high speed rail? I wonder what her answer would be. Knowing, you know, let's say the Los Angeles Times mm -hmm. was, was questioning her. I wonder what her answer would be to the LA Times. Are you in support of high speed rail? What would she say, I wonder? <laughs> well, if she didn't just come out and say, oh, I'm in support of it and just outright, then I, I would be surprised, um, you know, I, I'd imagine you'd you'd probably hear some sort of maybe double speak as far as saying something but not really saying anything. <laughs> um, you know, politicians are great at that, but she yeah. knows how to do that quite well. You know, but I'm just wondering if she's going to have a credibility problem when she comes back to Fresno if she loses, and for the next couple of years she won't be able to get anything done. Yeah, you know, I who knows? Um, you when you watch Ashley Swearing, you, you kind of always get the feeling that she's kind of moving on up, you know, as far as the, the political world. So, you know, let's see what, you know, she's already, she's done a lot, a lot, you know, um, she's been able to help the city balance her budget. She, she got the, the Fulton Mall thing to go through as far as putting that street in. She's had some losses as well, but, you know, I, I think if she comes back here, I think she still has some support here, and, and um, I don't know if she's alienated, alienated voters with, you know, some of the stuff in her campaign, but... I don't know if, if it really matters so much. I mean, I think there's always the next race, and I, I kind of have a feeling that we don't, we don't really have uh, Ashley Swearingen, you know, anymore past, past her uh, yeah. mayors. Gabriel Dillard is here from the Business Journal in Fresno, 436, Me TV, Option 11. We're back to talk about a few more things and your phone calls in a moment. Most watched news channel in Europe. Back here on the program, here on Connect with Me, 436 Me TV Option 11. Hey, I do want to talk about the Business Journal and some of the business awards. Talk a little bit about what happened um, at your, your newspaper that has been around for a long time, very credible newspaper, uh, with some of these business awards. Yeah, we have something called the Best of Central Valley Business uh, Awards. There's the logo right there. Uh, it's the first time we've ever done this. It's similar to like the best of that you see like the Fresno Bee do. Yeah. Um, well, it's basically uh, we were letting people vote on um, 25 different categories of of businesses or people. Yeah. Um, some of the examples are best company to work for, best shopping center, best nonprofit, best happy hour. Um, and so we're asking people to go to our website and vote. Um, they actually just write in for each of these 25 categories. They write in their favorite. And um, we, we've their got favorite, a, their favorite their, business. Yeah, their favorite business. Uh, and one of them is be, uh, favorite politician on business issues, which okay. is another. You know, there's a lot of interesting ones. Uh, got a lot of response. I mean, we've had about 2,000 individual responses, and and out of that, more than 2,000. Yeah, more really? than 2,000. Uh, That's a lot. We've been going for about a month now, and it's actually the voting ends this Friday, October 31st. Okay. Um, but actually, uh, you know, there's 200, 2,000 people who have voted, but there's actually 16,000 
389 individual votes. So that's, you know, people going through the categories. We, a we ask everybody to vote at least in, in, in 10 categories to make their, their vote to count. To make their choice, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, that, uh, that wraps up this October 31st. And, um, and our so, so, so let, uh, walk me through this now. The website, they go to the website, which is what? Thebusinessjournal.com. Thebusinessjournal.com. You have to put the word the in front. Yes. Yes. Thebusinessjournal.com. And then where do you go? Um, you're going to see uh, that, that logo again um, that they showed, the gold logo. Uh, you, okay. you see it on the right side, and you just click on that, and it'll ask you to go um, to our survey. And you just you go forward, and you have, you have 25 different categories with which to write in your favorite um, wow. business or, or whatnot. Um, the, all the winners are going to be featured in our December 12th issue. Uh, of the business journal, I think we're going to have an award ceremony before that as well. So the winners will be announced in the December twelfth. Yeah, issue. yeah, and we're going to recognize the top three in each category, but obviously the the number one uh, person will get a plaque. And how many categories are there? There's twenty five. Twenty five. Twenty five different categories. Um, wow. Yeah. So the, you know, there's something there for everybody. Um, you know, I, I bet so far the best company to work for has been our our uh, the, the the one that's received the most votes. Um, so, you know, Wh that, which is what can you say or no? I, I no. I, well, actually, I haven't looked at the results yet. Okay. But you know, I mean, our hope was that each you know businesses in our coverage area would, would reach out to their network in order to get people to come and and vote. So we I think we see that happening, and it's good. It's good. Now, I mean, is this the first time you've done this? This is the very first time we've that we've done this. Why, in your opinion, is it is it important to do this? Well, you know, any time. What is it? What will the results, in other words, tell you about what people think about certain businesses? Well, I think any time we're able to get, you know, solicit that feedback from from people, it's a good thing. I mean, a lot of times where the newspaper is in a position to tell you, you know, what what's the news today? Well, you know, this is what you should know. But I think this is an opportunity for people to let us know, you know, what 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 their feelings are and. Um, and like I said, I think it's an opportunity for businesses to, to shine. You know, it, um, it, it's as democratic as it gets. You know, it's an online vote. Um, <laughs> so we, well, and these are people, the people that are voting for this. And I'm assuming they come in contact or have had some kind of human contact with these businesses. And they've had ex prior experiences with these people, right? That's the hope. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think if uh, you didn't have a, a, a favorite nonprofit, then you probably wouldn't enter that and maybe do right. some other category that strikes you a little, you know, more personally. Right. But the local business here, if somebody has had personal contact or dealings with them and it's been a positive uh, experience, then I would imagine they go online and vote for their, their favorite. Right. And, that's and tell their, fr how, tell their friends works. to do the same thing. Yeah. It's, um, I'm excited. You know, I think uh, it's going to be pretty revealing. And, um, you know, as far as the winners here, and we, we hope it's, you know, something for those businesses to, to kind of hang their hat on, you know. First time you've done it? It is. Yeah. It's, uh, I think we saw this done in other business journal markets and just looked like a good opportunity for us. What? will it do to uh, help the newspaper well you know we're it's helping uh, people come to our website you know there's traffic uh, we hope that there's interest in our um, you know our, we're gonna have an event this might be an invitation only event but um, you know we we, just, we hope it generates some interest you know and, and it'll be in the paper it'll be online um, and we just want people to see that, that we did this and you'll have an awards dinner at some point mm. Yeah. Uh, down the road uh, in, December. Would be early, in December sometime. Yeah, I think it's going to be right before we announce all the winners in our paper on December 12th. Okay. I don't know if a date's been set in stone yet. All right, you're going to have to come back again, uh, maybe after these awards are given out, and uh, maybe sometime in January, if that'd be okay. Yeah. Yeah, come back again. Gabriel, it's always good to see you. You too, John. It'll be fun to watch the election, won't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll see how these ads uh, have, have played a major or any role at all as far as November the 4th is concerned. Mm -hmm. We're back tomorrow with a business segment here on Connect With Me. We'll see you then. Have a great day, and go Giants. Right,